Hello, and welcome to your Pointers for Parents podcast, where we support parents with anxiety related to teens transitioning out of the home after high school, whether they're heading off to the college campus, the military base, or it could simply be residential interdependence. As you all know, I'm your host, Dr. Michelle Lloyd, and joining us on today's episode is a professional who has operated within her zone of genius for over 20 years. She's an expert in that which she does, and her name is Natasha Soloviev. Let me tell you a little bit about her. She has been looking into the faces of babies, parents, and grandparents for over 20 years in her work as a clinical and public health nurse. She has felt the joys and the hopes, the disappointments, the traumas, grief, fears, and concerns, and the love of parents and children. She has heard their thoughts, their expectations, their laughter, and their struggles. She's witnessed their actions and the effects of those actions and has interacted with the myriad of professionals who weave in and out of family life. Oh my goodness, I just so love communicating, interacting with her. As a parent, she has a great appreciation for the range of experience that exists within and between each parent and child. It's from these experiences she has created OMG Parenting and a platform to assist parents in better understanding and communicating with their children. I am so excited today to welcome Natasha. Natasha, thank you so much for being here and for joining us. Well, thank you, Michelle. I tell you, your enthusiasm is (laughs) infectious. Well, thank you so very much. When you have a guest that's just qualified and experienced, I mean, it's just easy to just pour into and just share all. And before we jump into our questions, Natasha, listen, I know that you absolutely must have a morning routine. I see you on social media all the time, and I'm like, oh my goodness, her skills are just beyond phenomenal. So your morning routine, share with us a little bit about that, please. Well, it does involve social media sometimes. <laughs> it's perhaps pretty typical, you know, get up, I need the coffee in the morning. I do enjoy going in and that, that transition of prepping my coffee is very mm-hmm. important. And then I'm big on stepping outside. So I like to step outside. Mm-hmm. My cat likes to go outside. Um, I check out the bees and the plants. Then I'm a little bit more ready after a few sips of coffee, a little bit of quiet time. I just start on my day, whatever that day is. So it's pretty simple. Uh Simple, but, uh, but it works for me. Well, good, good. And you know what? I love when you say that quiet time and just starting that day off in peace, because if we're honest with ourselves, I mean, you know, the moment we look at that phone or email or anything like our day has started almost really without our permission. Like it's moving already quickly because our yeah. our brain is immediately on board. And so I love that. It yeah. resembles mine as well. Just that med- meditation and prayer and all of that. It's so critical. So thanks for sharing that. And, and you know what? I just want to just, you know, just dive right into that book. I mean, that book with such an impactful message uh, that leads many to find their inner selves. It's called The Dance of Parenting. Can you tell us just a little bit about that? I, I need us and our listeners to just have a clear understanding of what you've written, please. Sure. I, I mean, The Dance of Parenting, I think we can all relate to how sometimes you're swinging, Sometimes you're cha cha. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sometimes you're off stage. You're mm-hmm. just not there. But the, the book, you know, I guess when we write about parenting, we're writing about challenges with parenting. Mm-hmm. So the overall idea of it is to keep hope alive. Mm-hmm. Hope being opening space for good things to come in. And we all have times in parenting and this transition into 
whatever next steps our child is taking after high school is a big one um, where we can notice what we feel good about. We can notice what we have guilt or worries about. We can notice what we have regrets about. We can sometimes have parts that go smoothly. But a lot of it is all choppy, bumpy, and um, not always easy. So the the book focuses on not just the idea of keeping hope alive, but how you do that. So I I, I lay out a template. It's love, L-O-B-B-E, mm-hmm. a word we all like thinking about. Mm-hmm. And, of course, that acronym stands for something. It's about listening. It's about what I said, oming, meaning calming. It's about vision and voice and exploring. So that's the basic mm-hmm. of the love template. So I'm, I'm calling parents to listen, not just only to their mental chatter, because when we think about listening, we, we think of it in a mental kind of way, but also listening to their bodies and listening to their layers of feelings. And I think that's really important at this particular phase of parenting when our children are marching out into the world of independence more. Um, we can have layers of feelings about that. So it's paying attention to all of those. Mm. Thank you for sharing that. That's such, um, you know, it lures me to think about us having to turn our thinking inward as it relates to what's going on with inside. And that can be scary for a lot of people. I know years ago, being raised in a household with an alcoholic and drug addicted father and a battered mother, there was work, Natasha, that I needed to do on myself because of what I'd seen and what I'd heard. And so a lot of times, you know, I know for me, that, you know, I initially, I, it was just good if I just avoided all of that because I knew, <laughs> I, I absolutely knew work needed to be done. And so when I made that decision to begin working on myself, listen, sometimes we're unaware of what we may find. And when I think about what you just shared regarding that book, um, will individuals, whether hubbies or wives or Will they run the risk of identifying, you know, just just past issues, past trauma, just past um, yeah, inevitable yeah. thoughts? Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and I guess sometimes it does feel like a risk when you bump into that. Mm-hmm. Um, I like to put that in the context of as life unfolds, we simply meet our inner world. Mm-hmm. more and more and sometimes we do we bump into i think what you're describing is is trauma we bump into trauma and trauma mm-hmm. is a different experience than everyday feelings mm-hmm. um as, as big as everyday feelings might be and as challenging as they might be trauma um we kind of step aside and we do some different things with that mm-hmm. but yes it is scary and it's it, 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 it makes sense that one would want to, why would I want to pay attention to that? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's interesting because our listeners are uh, mothers or fathers whose teens are transitioning out of the home and elsewhere, whether campus, military base, um, their own apartment right down the street or the neighborhood over or out of state. And so as these teens are leaving, you're listening to your Pointers for Parents podcast, where we support parents with anxiety as it relates to teens transitioning out of the home after high school to get additional tips tossed and or gems dropped. Subscribe to our weekly emails by clicking on the link below. Now back to your Pointers for Parents podcast. Then Sometimes it causes us to, some of us, as it relates to our, our background as parents and what yeah. has happened there, it may hold us, uh, lure us or encourage us to hold on to our teens tighter as they're leaving. It may cause us to, you know, to handle the, the soiling of the nest 
inappropriately because when teens leave, I mean, their print brain is un undeveloped. And so they may do some things and then our responses may be ones that are unwise. I mean, it just causes a lot. And some of it has to do with, of course, some of our, our stuff. And so yeah. with that being said, can you share, and, and I'll share this before I ask this question. You know, when my teen transitioned out in 2016, drove her 17 hours to Virginia Tech, came back, I, I found myself on my prayer closet floor wailing, thinking, okay, so what have we just done? My one third of my heartbeat is in Blacksburg. <laughs> and so, and it made me have to just look inward again and be able to work through just another layer of, of, of emotion. So what steps can parents take to heal both physically and mentally as their teen is transitioning? And many, they have already gone as they have transitioned out of the home and they're dealing with those feelings. Yeah, I think you brought up one of the first steps. <laughs> what you have to do is like call it out, I say. Call it out. Call it out that you're having feelings. I think so much of this phase, whether it's a trauma trigger or just the, the letting go that happens and the normal everyday concerns that happen as your child moves on, I think that we just feel out of control. So what I think is great for parents to do is um, on a piece of paper, write down what your worries are, what your concerns are, what your regrets are, what your guilt is, um, what your feelings are. But then give yourself two columns. What about this can I control? And what about this can I not control? So where am I in control? Where am I not in control? Because there's a bit of all that mm -hmm. as our children depart. So I, I think by identifying what you can control, mm -hmm. like maybe you're you're worried about how often you're going to see your child and you, you really want to see them a lot because you know that you can keep your eye on them when you see them and you can, you can sense them and you can feel them. Well, they're going to be out of your space. So that's not going to happen. So you can't control how much your child is going to communicate with you, but you can control letting them know how often you want them to communicate with you. So that you feel their safety, you know, so that you're calm. So you can, you, you are in control of communicating about, you know, I really need to hear from you once a, what is it? Once a week, once every other day. Um, you know, at least as you move into the transition, that might not work if they're going into the military or certain circumstances because communication is cut off for a while. But knowing what you're in control of really helps. If you're having feelings of guilt um, or regret, identifying what aspect of that you can do something about now. Say, I don't know, say you feel guilty like you didn't teach your child enough about budgeting. Well, there's enough time right now to start doing something. What can you do to start to teach them about budgeting now? Mm. Now, but you're not in control of what their style of budgeting is going to be, but you can do something to teach them. So that's what I mean by what do you control of and what are you out of or not in control of? Mm -hmm. um, it's that whole process that, in fact, you've been going through throughout your parenting of letting go. This is a big letting go time. I actually have a specific um, exercise for that in my book about letting go and how to do that in a way that is actually calming, believe it or not, mm -hmm. to yourself. So just making that list, what am I in control of? What am I not in control of? It's helpful and makes it concrete instead of running around in your head at 50,000 miles an hour. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if we're honest with ourselves, you know, our, we can, if we're uncareful, we can thoughts can ruminate um, yeah. and yes and and begin to move out of control and take us places so yes so that we remain calm and at peace it is good yep making that list is yeah. good I totally agree yeah. so and although all of what you've shared have been nothing but wisdom tell me Natasha what 
final words of wisdom would you feel comfortable sharing with our parents who have already released, really, uh, and their teens have already really left the home and they're dealing with, just like I did in 2016 and really in 2018 again, less than 2018 when my second daughter transitioned out. But, but yeah, those final words of wisdom for those who have left already. Mm -hmm. For those who have left already, I'd say you get to pay attention to you now. Your fatherhood, your motherhood has been so focused on adapting to the role of parenting and adapting to everything that it means to bring up a child. Now it's your opportunity to pay attention to how you want to express your life. And that's what I mean by voice in my love template. Voice is about how you express your life. So how you express your life with your, your young adult moving forward and how you express your life separate from all of that. Mm-hmm. So again, again, bring in hope. Because a lot of people draw a blank slate. They're just like, oh, I don't know. It's all fuzzy and white. Allow space for hope. Allow space for something good to enter in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, that's so good. That is so good. You know, is there anything else that you like, a way that our audience can connect with you in the event they have a question or anything along those lines that they can reach, Natasha? Well, if you happen to be on X, now to X X Twitter. Okay. (laughs) Um, I'm at, my handle is O-Parenting. Okay. Um, Or my website, which is omgparenting.com. There's Right up the top of it, a contact button. I receive all kinds of questions and am happy to get them. So awesome, awesome. Thank you all so much. And I told you all listeners, listen, she is a true expert. And I know what I have taken away from the conversation is she has talked about the trauma triggers and writing down our worries and then making sure that we have two calms to that and, and being clear in our imagery. What are those things that we can control and what are our uncontrollables and being, and just being clear about that. And then also I love how she has that letting go exercise in her book and you all will definitely want to purchase that. And, and even as she talked, she mentioned about those feelings of guilt and those feelings of regret and what is it that I can do right now and then move on that. I know for the longest time I was trying to talk to my daughters about budgeting and they picked that piece of it up but then I wanted to slide into investing and what that looks like to just build your portfolio and just make sure that you're analyzing those investments and studying those and so now they've come back to me and they're leading those conversations so that I can dive in and make sure that they're educated on that piece as well so that's something that I'm going to get started on just by what I've heard today so and I will be paying attention to myself so I just want to just say right now, Natasha, thank you so much for being on Pointers for Parents podcast. And for our listeners, of course, we do have a a testimonial next week, so you'll want to listen again. But I want to thank Natasha again for just spending this time with us. I mean, I'm sure she had lots of things to do today, but she spent that this time with us, and I I so appreciate her. So until next time, uh, you'll want to... uh, This will be up on our Pointers for Parents podcast on Instagram. So if you need to listen to it again, you'll please make sure that you go there. Thank you all so very much. Natasha, thank you so much again. And until next time, listeners, be safe, be aware, and be confident in your parenting. Thank you all so much. Take care. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Pointers for Parents Podcast.